The Raspberry Pi Pico has been around for about two years, if I remember correctly. Uh, but the original board, which you can see right here, did not have any radio communications capabilities. So there was no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Despite that, the Raspberry Pi Pico proved to be a very successful board. A lot of people have adopted it, makers and uh, educators alike. Raspberry Pi Foundation came back with an updated version of the Raspberry Pi Pico, which now has wireless on it. So it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And I received one of these boards a couple of weeks ago. It was sent to me by the good people at Sun Founder. And uh, I thought I would uh, play around with the Raspberry Pi Pico wireless or the Raspberry Pi Pico W and show you what I found and uh, talk about my first few impressions. So in this video, I am going to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi Pico W and do a few simple experiments. You see I've already connected an LED on my Raspberry Pi Pico W. I'll use it in one of the experiments, but of course the most important thing that I want to test out is its Wi-Fi capability. I'm going to show you how to set up the Raspberry Pi Pico and how to use it in REPL mode, which means on the command line and also using Thony. Now before we begin, I just wanted to compare the original Raspberry Pi Pico with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Same form factor as you can see, the footprint is identical. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico W has got the wireless uh, chipset up here on the top of the board, which the original board did not have. Like essentially that area was uh, left unoccupied. And I guess when they designed the Pico, they did make provision on the board to allow for room to expand with a wireless chip and that eventually came into fruition. You can see a couple of other things. Uh, the, the header up here on the original Pico does not exist anymore at the same location. That's where the antenna is now. So that, that header has moved down here in between the microcontroller and the Wi-Fi module. The boot button still at the same location. I'm going to flip the board over just to see what's in the bottom. And I'm just going to hold it like this. So you can see that the footprint is, as I said, the same. The GPIOs are essentially at unchanged. Um, I haven't taken much um, time to look at the details here, but I'm going to do that in the data sheets instead of looking at the board themselves just so I can compare uh, one to the other. But at this point, I'm not really too interested in doing a GPIO to GPIO comparison between the two boards. The other thing that I can say is that the microcontroller is identical, so there's no change there. All right, so uh, having said that, I'm going to now focus on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the Raspberry Pi Pico W to my computer via USB and see it in action. I'm going to get its LED to blink on and off first on the REPL on the command line. In this side by side comparison of the pinouts for the Raspberry Pi Pico on the uh, left side and the Raspberry Pi Pico W on the right side, you can see that pretty much the GPIOs are identical across uh, the two models. Uh, I haven't seen any differences at all uh, when I've done a one to one comparison. The only difference is the location of the debugging three pin connector here on the Raspberry Pi Pico on the left, it was at the edge of the board, whereas in the Raspberry Pi Pico W is right in between the microcontroller and the Wi Fi module right the right here. All right, let's continue in the next part of this video where I'm going to show you how to set up MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico W and take it out for a spin. Let's continue by trying some MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And the first thing I'll do is to manipulate the LED that I've attached to GPIO2 here. There are a couple of ways to run MicroPython code on the Raspberry Pi Pico and 
Pico W. And the first one is to simply use the REPL, which essentially means to connect to the Raspberry Pi via a serial interface tool and run MicroPython on their command line. The Raspberry Pi Pico is ready to be used uh, as soon as you take it out of the box and plug it into your computer. But first I wanted to show you what uh, you can do if you want to install perhaps a newer version of the MicroPython interpreter or even an older version if you want to go back for whatever reason. There are a couple of places where you can download the binary UF2 file that implements MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. The first one is up here. If you go to raspberrypi.com in documentation, microcontrollers, and then micropython.html, just scroll down here under drag and drop MicroPython, and you'll find two different UF2 files depending on which board you want to install them on. So there's one for the Raspberry Pi Pico and another one for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. The one for the W model contains the additional Python packages uh, U requests. So you can do things like I get HTTP request and UPIP. These are pre-installed in this binary image. Another location where you can download uh, the, the latest possible version of MicroPython for the Raspberry Pi Pico is to go to the micropython.org website uh, forward slash download forward slash rp2 pico w this is specifically for uh, the W model. And here you'll see the nightly builds. This is the latest available bleeding edge version of MicroPython for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. I've tried both of those and they all work fine. In this demonstration, I'm going to go with this version of the MicroPython interpreter. Now, before I do that, just want to go back one step and go to the download folder. And in here, I'm going to search for Raspberry. And there's Raspberry Pi, there's Pico. So if you're working with uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico model, then just go to this URL here and you'll want to download one of those releases. This one is stable. And these are the Bleeding Edge nightly builds. All right. So I've already downloaded this file and I've got it right here. So what I'll do next is I'm going to connect my Raspberry Pi Pico W to my computer via USB while I'm holding down the boot sec button right here. So I'm going to hold this button down, plug in the cable, USB, let it go. And then back on my computer, you'll see that I've got a new drive that appeared, RPI-RP2. This means that my Raspberry Pi Pico W has mounted uh, onto my computer as an external drive. So I'm just going to drag this file across to the RPI attached drive, let it copy. And once it finishes the copy process, the drive will eject itself. So the Raspberry Pi Pico drive will eject itself. And now I'm ready to start using my Raspberry Pi Pico. I can either use Thony to do that. I'm going to show you that a little bit later in this video. First, I want to show you how to connect to the Raspberry Pi Pico in REPL mode. To connect to your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W and uh, interact with the MicroPython REPL, you need some kind of serial tool. In my case, I use this a very handy tool called Serial, uh, which looks like this. If you are interested, I find it very useful because it allows me to just easily have a bunch of devices here and remember my settings and connect automatically. I find it very easy, but there are other tools as well. So uh, find the one that works best for your situation. In my case, I'm going to use Serial. As you can see, Serial has already detected that there is a device that I can connect to. And I'm just going to click on Open. And now I am in MicroPython Ripple, ready to issue commands. So a simple command would be just to echo something like hello at the command prompt. Very simple. But of course, the standard hello world 
of microcontrollers is to get an LED to turn on and off. So let's do that. I'm just going to copy some code to prevent myself from making typos while I'm recording this. So I start with the machine import pin. Then I've got my LED connected to GPIO2. So this command sets up the LED object of type pin on GPI2 and I'm setting that as an output. And then to turn on the LED, I'm just going to do LED dot value one and the LED turns on. To switch the LED off, I just say LED value zero and the LED is off. So on and off, of course I can do this in a loop but uh, I'll save some time now and switch on to the next thing that I wanted to show you while I'm at the REPL as well. Obviously, because there is now a difference in capabilities between the Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi Pico W, which has to do with the radio communications, it's handy to be able to detect which board your MicroPython code is, is operating on. So you can turn these features on and off in your code. There is a way to do that programmatically and I'll show you how. The first thing to do is to import the sys package and then you can call the implementation function which will give you information about the board on which this code is running on and as you can see here the model on which this command was issued is the Raspberry Pi Pico W with the RP2040 microcontroller. So then your code can use this information here to act accordingly, perhaps inform the user that wireless uh, capabilities are not available on this current board. And of course, you can continue interacting with MicroPython on the Ripple. But now I want to show you the exact same thing using Thony. So I'm going to disconnect my Raspberry Pi Pico from my computer. Instead of just removing the connector from this end, I'll just do it on my computer end and then plug it back in. So as you can see, Raspberry Pi Pico was disconnected momentarily. And then as, as soon as I plugged the connector back in, it got connected again. And now I can continue with my uh, interaction that prevents Thony from picking up the Raspberry Pi because the serial window picked it up first. So I'm going to close this completely just to release the channel and then disconnect my Raspberry Pi from my computer, connect it again, and then in Thony, go into preferences, choose the appropriate interpreter from here, which is MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. It's already detected that the Raspberry Pi Pico is connected in FS mode. So, okay. And there is my Raspberry Pi Pico. Again, I have access to the REPL inside Thony. Just enlarge the window again. And I could do exactly the same thing as I did before. So let's try it out. Um, import pin from machine. Set up the LED on GPIO2 and turn on the LED. I go exactly the same thing. But this time I can also write a program like this and store it on the Pico itself. So this program, I'm now using the network module. I'm going to connect to my local Wi-Fi or this is my experimental Wi-Fi network and I am going to create a YLAN or WLAN object, activate it, and then connect to my local Wi-Fi network. Then I'm going to use U requests to do a GET request. So I've got a GET request right here, which is just going to go out to datejsontest.com, fetch back a bit of uh, data, like a JSON package or JSON response, and then print it on the command line or the shell. So this is already stored on my Raspberry Pi Pico and I'm going to start it. And a few seconds later, 
I'm getting back a response from jsontest.com which contains the current date and time and so recording this okay so that that was uh, an easy test there's a lot more that I can do but at this point um, I'm still finding my way around the Raspberry Pi Pico W and I'm thinking about projects that uh, might be interested in implementing uh, with this microcontroller I'm just going to close up this video this introductory video with a list of resources that I've collected that I think you'd be interested in and you might want to have a look at them as you are finding your way around the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W. First of all of course are the Thony uh, integrated development environment which is probably the best development environment for MicroPython and Python out there but it's in particular for MicroPython not just on the Raspberry Pi Pico but also on boards like the ESP32 and many others so you can get the Thony editor on thony.org then there's the documentation page for the Raspberry Pi you find documentation for pretty much all Raspberry Pi products, but in this particular case, we are interested in the microcontrollers. So go to raspberrypi.com documentation, microcontrollers and MicroPython, and you'll find information about the microcontroller on which you can run MicroPython. This is the RP2040 on, on which the Raspberry Pi Picos are based. And down here, you'll find uh, specific information on the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So learn more about the pinouts, software, uh, firmware downloads, etc. After that, have a look at the MicroPython website where you can download the bleeding edge versions of MicroPython, either for the Pico W or the original Pico. Then the data sheet for the Raspberry Pi Pico W lots of information in here if you want to know about all the details this is where to look for those details now if you are into c plus plus and you'd like to try out some raspberry pi pico examples in c this is the place to look for them so these are c plus plus language example and there's one folder in particular that is dedicated to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And last but not least, uh, thank you to SunFounder. Mike at SunFounder was kind enough to send me a Raspberry Pi Pico W that I haven't been able to find and purchase elsewhere. It's uh, a product in uh, high demand right now and getting your hands on one is not very easy. So thanks again, Mike. I appreciate it.